and uh -huh. along with me it will be uh, the creative director of uh, Technografica, Mr. Marco Fontana, which will uh, live uh, hand draw in. Uh, uh, oh yes, I love that. I yeah, love pretty that. nice. I can't see you now, though. You can't? Oh my God! Hold on. I, that's why I put on my glasses because I didn't know what I was. <laughs> 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 what I was clicking on. No problem. <laughs> So just to give you an idea, basically we will um, record this uh, um, podcast and then we will broadcast it uh, next week in several platforms. Of course, we will let you know so that you can also share it with your, uh, in, uh, within your channels. But I think this is something very interesting and cool, especially for our um, uh, community, because they are always aiming to see uh, new designers and new players and uh, also players that are uh, very well known such as you and um, so I'd like to start uh, right away and uh, I welcome our uh, uh, very special guest here Sandra Diaz Velasquez from uh, uh, Miami so she's a very talented and very famous uh, uh, Miami interior designer and I'm very glad architect. to be an architect of course and I'm um, very glad to be here with, uh, with you today, along with uh, our creative director, Marco Fontana. So I'd like you to give us an idea of uh, who you are and, uh, and what you do, a uh, presentation of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano and Marco. It's really a pleasure to be here. And I'm, really, I'm really honored that, that you thought about uh, me and Eolo Design for, for, you know, for this. Uh, initiative. Um, I'm an architect, as Stefano said, an interior designer. I'm based in Miami and uh, we specialize uh, in doing uh, residential projects and uh, some commercial and hospitality as well. And uh, as we say, uh, we, we love to make dreams come true. That's our job, that's our mojo. And, uh, and from then on, uh, we work as a team to make it all happen. Uh, Stefano, you more than anyone know that, that we leave it all there. Um, and uh, this is our passion. So I know. we're very happy to do it. We, we are very thankful always to give our clients the best. And, uh, and that's what we do. And this is something that you already know because we are, of course, following you, uh, following you in uh, on different social media and seeing your work. And of course, also we collaborated together for um, for some projects. And I see your passion, your passion, and your team uh, passion on uh, everything that uh, that you are doing in uh, in your projects, which are mainly based in uh, in US. And uh, you know, I was um, um, aiming to do this um, podcast series also in order to understand how uh, different business and different countries are uh, facing the emergency that we are living today. So one question that I, I wanted to ask you is um, uh, how this uh, COVID-19 disease and emergency is influencing your job and, uh, and your projects? Well, this impacted us uh, very profoundly. Uh, I would say everyone in the world, and, um, and what uh, it's been doing. Uh, well, it's impacted us both professional, you know, and personally. And uh, aside from anything uh, else besides some social distancing, in how the reality is going to change for all of us in the future. What I also want to say is um, it's, it's been amazing that is, this has been like a, like a good excuse to evolve into wellness. And um, for that, I'm thankful. And I think my team is also taking it like that. Um, we have taken this time to do many things that we always complained that we didn't have time to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have like gardening. 
<laughs> well, I wish that I that I had a lot of garden, you know, to walk on. But but things similar to that, and not only to that, but for office or to our processes, to you know the 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 normal dialect, the normal uh, interactive uh, interchange of ideas. Like everything has changed, and besides from everything else that everyone focusing, you know, and talking about. Uh, for us, it's been good. It's been good from that point of view. Of course, we have challenges. Uh, we have some projects that have come to a stall point because first uh, they were ready for us to, you know, begin construction. And many uh, buildings here have not allowed us to get into, you know, like uh, it's yeah. of course, uh, there's no allowance to external people to get into the buildings. And so that's, you know, those projects are at, at stall and uh, where we've been lucky that uh, we have many others that are on the design process and uh, we always work uh, virtually, you know, like we have the log that we have many clients that do not live here, either in the States or in the city that we are used to work with them virtually. So that's why we haven't felt you know like that uh stopping 100 percent uh we haven't felt that we have you know we have kept working thankfully we're a small boutique studio uh that we pursue you know like with small guys pursuing big jobs yeah sure, <laughs> so, sure. uh but yeah so we have been able to keep working together of course uh virtually uh, you know, like there's no one at, at the office right now. It's only my husband and myself at the office. And um, everyone is work, working virtually, but we're lucky that uh, we haven't stopped and uh, we have been able to, to retain our guys, which is the most that I was worried about that we want. I wanted my team uh, to not be touched, to keep in touch. Yeah. And and we're lucky to say that we're still um, we're still functioning well and, and, and thankfully well. You know, this uh, I think this is something that is um, definitely affecting the way of uh, of working in this period. But um, I also think that this is something that uh, will last in uh, in a long period, in a longer period. Uh, for example, in Italy, um, I mean especially for some um, several generations is uh, um, difficult to think about work without actually going to work. Uh, while from this point of view, um, smart working is something maybe Northern Europe or US is a bit more uh, already organized from this point of view. Uh, so my other question to you is, um, do you think that this situation and uh, uh, these um, things that we are doing right now, such as a sm uh, smart working or uh, uh, doing Zoom calls, uh, uh, meeting with uh, our clients, is this something in your opinion, in your opinion that will uh, last longer even after this first uh, emergency period? Oh, yes, for sure. For sure. Technology will play an amazing, vital part in uh, what is going to be society, you know, at, at all levels. You know, beginning with, with work, with line of work, like it will be impacting tremendously, even more. If it was doing it before, even more now. Uh, yeah, uh, we would depend on technology. Uh, I, I cannot even imagine the, the percentage because that's going to be key for everyone to keep uh, advancing and, and producing. Um, everything related, and, and not, not only our profession, but all professions. Profession. Yeah, of course, it's going to be more virtual. Uh, I think uh, office buildings are going to be impacted big time. Uh, the way that you know office buildings are going to be designed are going to be completely different from now on. I was invited. I've been invited. I've been talking to you know to some uh, local TV. Uh, show news and you know news tv and and podcasts and webinars with our trade and that's basically uh, all of us coincide in in saying that uh, office buildings are gonna be the most impacted 
uh, in terms of designing in the way that they work. So uh, open offices are dead and cu cubicles are coming back from the, from the 80s. So. Yes, it's going to be way more. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of island like <clears throat> design. I think it's going to be uh, the key, like uh, uh, what was uh, before those uh, privacy pods that they were designed before. Now they're going to be the norm more and more. Um, it, that's, I think that's the side of our business that's going to be more in health. You know, like every the law, uh, hospitality, like all the public areas for hospitality, mm -hmm. that's going to be the biggest <clears throat> impacted. And uh, and, uh, and uh, for home, I, I'm I'm sorry if I went out from your question. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> feel free to to say what you what you feel because you know. It's very interesting even for me because um, we are interviewing uh, several players in the uh, interior design field, in the architectural field from uh, all over the places, different countries. And uh, it's very interesting to me to see what is the focus of um, every person that I interview uh, and uh, how, it's, uh, how his or her uh, country is um, facing this disease and how it's affecting the way of working because this is definitely something i mean in my opinion there, re, there, there was a life before and a life after uh, oh, yes. uh it, it is and uh it's very important for uh, for example talking about mm, the, the digital revolution which is something that was already happening since a couple of years 10 years maybe five years uh but right now the companies that are not doing that are going all the way on uh, on that and um, but it, it is very difficult if you start now uh, while if oh. you started before you are on a good track exactly uh, i think uh, you say uh, you know a concept that's key uh, for evolution um we have to be flexible and to accept uh that change is the only constant that's that's key if uh, you know like if people before were not adapting to uh, this new era because we were we saw it coming it's, it's a lot of yeah. you know like this was like the huge like step point like the the, the accelerator yeah. to that change but uh if someone uh, was kind of reluctant to change and to adjust yeah. to that change it will not, you know, like it would not happen, whatever they were expecting on doing. We, this time was an accelerator, like it was like a four, six week accelerator. You know, uh, I, I, igniting motor for us to just accept it, keep accepting or change completely a mindset and, and evolve. And, um, if, if, but, but to me, it's, it's a good excuse to evolve into wellness. I, I can say it, you know, like I, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Like we, there, and, and you're right, there's a before and after. It's a before and after this. And, but, but the after can be good. Like we, we, there's lots of good things that we creatives. It does the biggest challenge for us. It's yeah. up to us. They it's really up to us. It's up to us to shape the new world. And this is an amazing opportunity we have. This is a, like, I could not have asked to be in another time uh, in the world. Like this is, this is a great chance for us, the creatives to shape the new world. And, and we have it in our hands and it's up to us to, to accept that challenge, to embrace it, to change the mindset and to adapt. In now, to... now more than ever, uh, being able to ever. adapt to this new situation is what will uh, uh, make us survive this situation, as uh, as we already did in uh, in the past. Yes. What, what do you think will be, you know, um, the role, for example, of uh, um, uh, traditional sales agents or traditional vendors in this uh, new world? Will they have a place, uh, an important role? Will uh, their role be reduced? Or uh, I think they need to change as well. <laughs> it's up to them. And, and it's, it, it's up to everyone. It's not only, it, it's only about us designers. It's just, it, we need in architects, we need to change. 
But yeah, if we talk about them, it's up to them. You know, like you, all of us have to reinvent ourselves, every single one of us. Uh, but they can also embrace, you know, change. Uh, so many of them, and you know them, and you know, uh, you know, like that, that's how we know each other. Yeah. yeah. If it were not for them, we wouldn't sure. be talking today. Exactly. Uh, I think the role is important. More than every role is important, and it won't disappear unless they evolve. You know, like they embrace change. It's the new way of thinking. It's nothing is like, uh, to me, that's the way I think. That, that nothing has to disappear. It disappears if they don't change, yeah. if they don't evolve. It's, it, and then all of us in every single one of our, of our traits have to think creative about how we're going to approach this new way of selling. Maybe they need to learn more to work virtually. Maybe they need to be uh, more proactive into digitally in uh, doing demonstrations. You know, like I have a, a, a friend that's a rep talking about her. Mm -hmm. uh, talk, you made me remind her about her. She is a, a, it's a, a vendor and represents fabrics, a, a big fabric, uh, big fabric uh, uh, store in selling uh, uh, that we have local here. And she just decided to do lives, but it was one of the first people to begin doing, began doing lives, showing all of us, her clients, yeah. okay, yeah. this is it, we, we got this, this is, look, this is amazing. And she puts it and she creates like really nice, uh, cute pictures uh, of the new sample or the new fabric. And she puts a neck next to a really beautiful background that it kind of goes with it. And, and it, she just got creative. And she's working more than ever. Yeah, you know, I think gets... this is definitely another opportunity for uh, for this type of uh, of jobs. And uh, in from some from some point of views, is uh, even uh, better. For example, we are a wool covering company, and we are working with uh, sales agents, of course. And uh, some of them are working internal the company. For example, um, the one that are working on the Italian territory. So, mm -hmm. what happened since uh, until? three months ago uh, they started from our company driving the car all uh, all the way to northern italy southern italy it takes maybe three four hours to go to to the client uh, of course it is important to have uh, a direct uh, uh, contact to to your client or to your partner but we discover in this uh, two months that we are also able to reach the clients in other way we, and, and we can maybe do 20 appointments by day, one in Naples, one in Rome, one in Milan, and within three hours of, uh, of time. And uh, this is, I think, the, the thing that is really changing. And also, it is changing the mindset of the clients. They maybe were not, um, uh, uh, you know, aiming to do that very, very well. They, they wanted to, you to, to come and, and see the, the product and see the, the coach. Uh -huh. and, which also is very important. Uh, but yeah, we, we discovered that there are other, uh, other channels, other ways. And uh, as, as you said, it is very important to evolve from, uh, from this point of view as, uh, as well. So Sandra, tell us something about your, uh, one of your latest projects so, uh, and, and the way you work. It's uh, very fascinating to me to, to understand that from, from you. Thank you. Uh, well, I want to talk about one of the, this new project that, that this last project that we did together. Uh, it was oh, yeah. a, a penthouse renovation here in, in one of our very beautiful uh, parts of uh, uh, South Florida. Um, it was a penthouse. The couple, it's a couple from Ohio, and um, they had a set uh, goal for a small project. And they came to me, the idea was to do a small project and the way they showed me things, for some reason I knew that they wanted more than that. And I took the risk and, and, uh, and proposed what I, my vision of what to me, what was they needed and, um, and they liked it. So I took that risk and I say, I know that you only, have this in mind but i definitely 
but when we talk C, this is what you need. So I, I always like to do that. You know, like if I see that someone comes to me, but I see that, that, that I can give more of they, they, you know, like they can have more for what they think they, you know what? Most of the clients do not know what they want. Yeah. 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 It's, until, until you, know, until you show them. <laughs> until we show yeah. what is it, you know, like they tell, because they, it's not their job to do it. It's our sure. job. We have to interpret, you know, whatever they are saying, they're, you know, the, the way they talk to each other, if it is a couple, the way they talk to each other, the way they, you know, like whenever you're meeting with yeah. them, many things, you know, like as a designer and architect, I learned to be a bit of a psychologist to see, yeah, okay, exactly. what, what's the, what, what, is, what are they telling me that they're not saying in words? So I try to always interpret the best I can, uh, whatever they want. I'm very graphic. I, I, um, so I, I try to, to listen a lot at the beginning. I take a bit of time. I always ask them, listen, uh, you won't see a, a sketch in a second, uh, well, depending on the project, but yeah. uh, for some of them, I need to listen a lot. And then I come up with whatever I, you know, like we think. I would love to do virtual present presentations. I love everything uh, virtual. I we've been we've been doing that for almost ten years now. We, like in technology, we're always embrace technology. I love it, and uh, that way that vision they have is very graphic. So we do virtual tours. We do uh, um, you know renderings and a lot of. Uh, that's why I ask always about of my vent to my vendors, my team of vendors, yeah. lots of graphics so I can sure. I can have the better, you know, I can show the most realistic idea when I present something. Most of the, that's that's the best way for me to sell the idea. People and want to see. That's what we did. They fall in love with that. I, but I do it from a more uh, kind of holistic approach to combining hand sketches and and then this virtual reality, like I, a lot of that. And um, I use many of the things they give me, pictures of their family, or I tie it, uh, she sent me, this client, she sent me a picture of her granddaughter with mm -hmm. a horse, they, they train horses. So that she sent me that picture and it, the perfect, the color, everything that that picture had was the starting point for us to develop the design. And uh, we kept some things also. I, if it's a renovation, we like to keep things that we like mm -hmm. from the space or the, the you know, like the, the apartment in this case uh, was a piece of red marble they had at the entrance. And that red coincided with the red of the hoodie of the granddaughter that she had in the picture with a dark brown. That was the beginning of the project, was the connection of the existing with what she had. And then from then on, we carry on. And then uh, it was a very small scope, but we ended up doing the whole, the whole, the whole thing. And um, so, so that's how we develop uh, uh, the idea and we end up doing the whole the project. project. Yeah. It was one of the major, it's been a, one of the major scope projects. It was a full scope, it was interior architecture had some part of structural and we went all the way to interior design so it was a very kind of those dream uh, projects that we were yeah. able to develop full and, and I, I, in it. fact I, I saw that that was um, uh, advertised on uh, several uh, magazines and uh, social media channels and uh, I, I love that uh, that project I I am following I you I following you so I see all uh, all the process oh, all the details in time and uh, I, I love the way you were uh, you and uh, and your team you work thank you so. well we're very thankful for because that project um it's been you know like an, an italian magazine uh, saw the project and they liked it so they published they were the first to publish uh, the, the, project. the project and uh, they invited us to omi to fiera yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah talk about it and for us it's been amazing you know like i love it italy i don't i i think you know i love italy everything involving uh, that richness of culture and, and you guys the creatives 
I love the way you guys do uh, design. Uh, so they we, we, me we have a common uh, Latin uh, uh, genetic. That's why. <laughs> You got it. You, you have it. You, so do, you do. You do. You do. You have that. You know, like the creativity in your everywhere. Everywhere It's rich. You know, like so rich, and I so admire it. And I, to to us was an honor to be there in Fiera talking about one of our projects. It was a dream come true. I still can't believe it. You know, from uh, from what I can, from what I, what I understand from you, how you approach uh, project, this is a way that you can also use in this new era, let's say. So the way you 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 work is uh, is something that you can also use in this, uh, let's say, after COVID nineteen era, because uh, you are uh, using a lot of virtual tours or digital tools. Uh, this is, I think, very important to be successful in this new in this new period. But how is Miami facing the the situation? Are people allowed to go out, or because right now we are just entering, we just entered uh, on Monday, phase two. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So basically, we are not we are now allowed to uh, go out for ten minutes. No, a bit more, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it was a very difficult situation. And uh, I know that also US is, uh, is facing a bad situation right now in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of. That. Yes, yeah, uh, situation here um, in the most uh, dense area populations where, you know, for example, we are here in, in it's uh, kind of the downtown of yep. the city big building tall big tall buildings a lot of density you know like many units per square foot or per square meter and lots of tall buildings that's where the situation got kind of more complicated because we have a lot of people together yeah. and uh, that's when you know like the, the outbreak came hit us harder the hardest uh, the biggest impacted city has been so far New York. Uh, for some reason, New York it was you know took the biggest hit. Then Los Angeles took the second biggest hit, and then the area of Florida was the third one. It's been the third one. And so, so we had you know like we went to, into lockdown the fastest, and. Uh, it's difficult here in Miami. People don't like to be inside. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine why. They, I mean. they taking it. Uh, they taking it hard. Uh, I was lucky. I am lucky because I work and live in the same building. My office is on a second floor, and I live on a fifteenth floor. So somehow I'm used to be locked down in a way like okay, I, yeah. I don't go sure. out that much. So I, I haven't felt it that, that much and it has not impacted me that much because I haven't felt it that way that I, you know, like it's not that I commute all the time and when we go out for say visits and stuff, but, but mostly it's not a day to day activity for, for me. So I haven't felt it. So to me it's been, fine i can I'm, I'm kind of used to it but for so many of my oh, friends yeah, yeah. Family and people it's been very difficult to be locked down and you know we have beaches and we have a you know people are out and about the whole time um you know and, here here in uh, in italy all um all italians were surprised on how italians were so uh, good in following the rules. And so everybody was surprised that it, uh, that we were able to actually stay home and, and follow the rules, uh, except for some uh, rare uh, uh, situations, like uh, you know barbecues organized on uh, on on roofs and, uh, and terraces. Oh, really? with, uh, yeah, with fifty people <laughs> grilling. Oh, wow, really? yeah. yeah, but for for for, for the most it was. Um, a good reaction by uh, by Italians. I think also because we faced a very bad situation as one of the first uh, countries to, to be there. You know, I was in New York uh, two, one month and a half ago. I've been able to come back on uh, March 15th, Before the lockdown? Just before the lockdown. 
And, you know, I, I was uh, on phone conversation with my family in France and they were telling me, oh, here in Italy, everything is going wild. And while in New York and in US, maybe nobody, nobody was talking about that, it. Uh, nobody, like people here woke up kind of late. And, yeah. uh, and the thing is like, because I was in Europe on, on I was in February of Europe, I felt, yeah. You know, like I was able to feel something was happening. Yeah, something was happening, and we took measures when we arrived, kind of early on, but kind of only us, like small people around. But we were able to kind of to plan and, and take measures. But most of the people took a lot of time, and here in, in the United States, we, we took long time we could have have avoided lots of things that happened if we had planned and, and kind of listened before. to what was happening in europe before you know i think that anyway, you, yeah us reacted later and but also yeah. europe reacted later because everything was already yeah. happening in china so i think that uh, people really start to act when something is just po pointing exactly. at you that you you Otherwise, you just, uh, I, I don't care. And, uh, <laughs> That's, no, the it's, thing. Uh, That's what we think, you know, like what, what's been beautiful about this, that we have to learn a hard way, that we are all one. There's no barriers. There's no boundaries. There's no more, yeah. you know, like uh, frontiers any, any longer. It, we're all one. And everything we do or everything I do impact the other. It's, it's we have to learn that it's it's everything we do impact the other yeah, and, uh, and yeah. many people uh didn't think that before now it's clear that there's no barriers that everything you know, like we're all the same no matter how high low whatever whatever it is we're all the same and if we don't take if we don't take uh that in mind into account or not only personally, but professionally in our designs, everything in, in our mindset, if we don't think about the, who are we going to affect with what we do. Uh, totally agree. For example, for design, uh, I always, you know, like I'm, you know, my, my country of origin is Colombia. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want to talk about dates, but, I learned architecture, I learned my trade uh, without a computer. You know, like I had to sure. learn everything by hand. There was old not school. old school, like it was all by hand. We had to design with the elements, our designs and buildings. We had to take into account the sun, the sun, the wind, the water, like everything, the natural elements we had to locate our you know buildings responding to them to taking advantage of natural lighting you know and ventilation cross ventilation so how we will design or do like everything um in in here that's less of a norm you know like and and from some years we have here in the states uh that uh the green building, you know, mm -hmm. movement, and I'm I'm happy to say that I am certified on that because I just it's natural for me. It's natural. It was easy for me to get the idea, and now this it's a good excuse to evolve into it for us designers and architects to design thinking about what how our design impacts the environment, no matter what, okay. no matter how our design is going to impact the others and ultimately think, mother earth yeah, so. and do you think that this is this will be one of the uh, one of the topics one of the points that will will change in the next uh, uh, era of designing because uh, how do you think design will change after this uh, how your projects will change and how clients will uh, look at design and what what will they want for their home or their uh, or their offices of course it will completely it 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 
I, what I was saying before is the perfect excuse. I always wanted to introduce many of my wellness, you know, ideas into, yeah. into my designs. And sometimes because of cost, you know, like how sustainable the return on investment, the ROI, sometimes is a little higher at the first, you know, at the first time. Yeah. It was difficult to sell that cost 10, 15 percent more. Uh, but now everyone is going to want that. Everyone is going to want it. And because everyone's going to want it, prices are going to come kind of a, a bit more amicable for all the projects to begin as they should. In, from, you know, from all aspects, from zero, or even if it's a renovation, all the materials that we use, water-based, non-organic, uh, volatile compounds and paints and wallpapers and uh, better use of if we're going to have plastics and acrylics recycled content and you know led lighting even better even more now like no more fluorescent that's out already super low but but now it's even more you know like everything is gonna we're gonna have the perfect excuse to do it you know, yeah. to impact it all the way through the whole process, we're going to be able to do that. Uh, we're going to have to be more proficient on that. Uh, uh, we have to learn a lot, be more efficient in, in, into implementing all the strategies and protocols and process because not many people are used to that. We yeah. are lucky to, to, to have that already implemented. Many of our clients like that. Uh, so that we we have a lot of that into motion in whatever we specify and do, but but now it's 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 gonna be perfect for for us to have in our proposals or designs the good excuse. This is not only about us, but it's but not only affecting us, but everybody. How yeah, because the, the, I've read an article on some magazine and, and I think Vice. Uh, where they said they basically said that this is the very first uh, um, situation in which <clears throat> all the globes is actually facing the same situation. Everybody is facing the same situation in a digital yeah. era where everybody is connected, so everybody can share their uh, um, their situation there. And and we find we are finding out that either you are in Italy, in Colombia, in US, or in Nigeria everybody is facing the same exact situation everybody's facing the same problems problems uh, to stay home or uh, to be able to do something that you were not used to uh, for example staying home 24 hours uh, without going to work and uh, and i found that is uh, fascinating from from a point of view because as you said people are really now uh, starting to understand that it's it's all one it's not uh, just a single, it's, uh, it's all one. And I think this will, as you said, uh, really affect also the interior design uh, architectural uh, world. Um, for example, yeah. we are seeing now that uh, private customers, you know, they are maybe, it's, uh, it's two months that they are uh, at home looking at the, that white wall and they want to do <laughs> maybe a wallpaper. No, they're beautiful. <laughs> yes, I was going to say about yeah. that. Like we're gonna have you guys, like all of us, we have more inquiries about you know, like for residential projects, more even yeah. even more now. People want to be comfortable at home. People want to be well, and and now that they have more time at home, that you know they begin seeing that thing that they didn't like. Okay, how are we gonna do this? You know, yeah. and all clients are saying, listen, can we just? You know, redo this. Like, can we rethink this way? And then we just, you know, that that part that you, you know, like that you could not finish because we didn't want to go into that phase. Now, why don't we? Why don't we revisit that part and then just do something good to that area or something like that? True. And uh, and um, it's, a, it's a great excuse to to do that. I also, what I see for for home renovations now on, it's a, whenever we do. Uh, design it's gonna for example to me kitchens are gonna be greener than ever they're gonna have more space for for nature green uh, you know like i think more pots and plants that they where they can have the species about it i see you know like i was i was 
looking at, at Saloni like a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, that tended, that trend of having more kind of greens into the kitchens so you can kind of play more with nature in a, a better indoor air quality in the designs, a more uh, natural lighting. It's way more important than ever and how we balance it with artificial lighting. Also, I see more homes, offices uh, yeah. design. Yeah. yeah no, but to you know but by design to wellness to how i feel comfort and how i feel well you know my mm -hmm. best i was giving a podcast one of these days in one of the show one some of the webinars or shows that I, i've been so thankfully invited to do and i i talk about the home offices and and it's 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 great the way that now we can focus more on that and people want to do that more yeah. than ever that like many you know we're going to be spending more time at home i see that for sure for a year or two more yeah for sure that we're going to be more to that even because um, yeah. companies are now changing their uh, policies in terms of uh, having you know i i remember going and several design studios where maybe they have 100 designers one 30 centimeter after the other and this is something which is not possible anymore and uh, maybe companies oh. will start to uh, smart working as we are already doing um, having people at home working so when you are at home you but you want to feel at office in some way because you, you, yeah. you don't want to 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 work in the same place where you do your breakfast and exactly uh, that's the key to maintain focus that's so one part of the you know the the podcast that i was giving is like uh we have to now develop a, a bit more professional but the luxury of being at home is that you can be more home more more comfort but at the same time you, you need to kind of develop but it's not only the the, the physical part but the mental the mindset part yeah. also separate you know have a little bit of pra uh, privacy and and have that same schedule kind of time you know, type of focus and separate your personal from your professional task and all of that. And, and that's a key part of it. But I also see in terms of going into wellness, which I think is key for us to go through this, is uh, also see lots of spaces for meditation or g home gyms, more, you know, like design, more well thought uh, about and more thought of. And that's when architecture and design and you guys come in so handy in order to have a good design to it. So if we yeah. have a lot of open doors. Architecture design. and design will change based on how the, the behavior of the people will change and is already Completely. changing. The built environment, it's always been, you know, like the, the starting point in the definite, you know, like the one that defines how we live. It's, it's, it's it. That's it. It's physical. Yeah. So that's, that's the way we're going. So it's up. We have a big responsibility on it. And, and for example, the offices, you, you were talking about the hundreds, you know, people, uh, maybe what they do is kind of shift, you know, like a uh, number of days, yeah. this X amount of people come to work and then the next is the other amount to, to, yeah. to occupy the same space, do it through shifts. You know, so and then some of them work from here, some of them work from home. From home yeah. uh, more uh, key, more digital, so no one touches surfaces much. No elevator, like I, I see, like uh, like uh, your eye is the one opening the door for the elevator, or you know, like so, just stopping in in front of a face recognition and uh, yeah. sensors, you know, like, you know, for sensors, presence, for presence, if you stop, yeah. you know, passing by, the light would automatically lit up, so you don't have to touch a switch, so you don't have to, you know. This, this, these are one of the things that will change the most, I think, along with uh, uh, commercial spaces or uh, spaces like airports or train stations. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, I'm seeing, I see, I'm seeing uh, Marco, right? Marco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Drawing the sharks. Drawing sharks <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. For fear, that's yeah. the other thing, you know, yeah. like balance. And I was loving the other designer of the coffee, the coffee. I love that. I oh, yeah. Yeah. The art he's doing, right? I, this is amazing. 
so yeah so that's you know like that's another uh, thing like the fear-based culture uh that we have to avoid it, it's 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 a key for that's why i've been talking about wellness all the time because that's not only physical but mentally and spiritual like now it's the that's why i'm so excited because it, it, now is the the time that barriers kind of are not that separated you know yeah. they don't separate any longer we are now one in soul it's where mind spirit and body together now it's not before we compartmentalize like the professional it's here the person is here you know like you now you are all one yeah. and yeah. we have that um I, I feel kind of more 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 uh, free to talk about every, yeah. all of this, yeah. and it's yeah. amazing because all of us are in the same boat. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so no, you can all, you can talk more freely about how you find yourself mentally, you, your mindset connects to your body, you know, like all that. It's amazing, and in our designs now more than ever, we can introduce that. I always dream of also designing products or lines of fabrics or wallpapers, things like that. And, and that's another- Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do it, yeah. Let's have, right? Uh, we'll do, for awesome. sure. Uh, that con that's another amazing opportunity, collaborations now more than ever are gonna be the key for all of us to, to survive and to thrive, not survive, to thrive. That's how I see it. That's how I've been seeing it from the beginning uh these excuses you know uh, it's amazing how they are a great excuse for all of this collaboration sure. wellness uh, cooperation not competition uh you know all that no, what, what i think is uh, as you as you're saying this is uh, that mm, people now they want to feel more uh, comfortable they want they want to stay well <laughs> They don't want yeah. to have fear anymore. They don't want to, you know, uh, being in a bad position because we are already in a bad position. So yeah. we want to um, now and for the next future to stay well. And the culture of well-being, as you were saying, will be paramount in the next uh, in the next years and in the next months coming. And uh, yeah, the role of interior designers and architects will be very important from this point of view. If we, exactly, if we are able to communicate that, that of my company, it's more uses, always the, of my company mission, it's we, we have it well written and we remind ourselves of, of it all the time. It's like we communicate emotions. That's what we do. That's our job. We communicate emotions and we make our clients' dreams come true. That's the way we work. And of course, all the technological part, the professional part, all that, that comes after. But yeah. the main key is that, like that emotion, the wow that they, they didn't even know what they wanted, but they see it and they all, yeah. yes, that's what we want. So that's the way for us. And we are always being, you know, emotion driven to it, like go beyond what's evident and always try to emotion and, and, um, very holistic in the approach we do to our designs and, and innovation at every day, level and always nature. That's why he always, he always wins, yeah. you know? You know, for companies and for people uh, very well organized like you, uh, I think this will be um, a good time because you are you were already working in this way, and which is the way uh, which now is mandatory if you want to survive uh, in this new in this new era, or at least uh, to to do to do well. I I I hope is is it's but it's it's amazing that. It, that it had to be mandatory. <laughs> I, I yeah. can't. That's the part that I don't understand. Like, why it wasn't before? Wait, like, yeah, before, yeah. Like, that's the way to be. That's the way to go. No, no. Uh, I see before. Uh, yeah, that that idea of uh, the ego, one name shining there, in design. No, the person, the designer is the designer. Is the name is. The, and and that's never you know like we never been the case to us it's just all together it's a team it's it's all of the effort 
it's all all of us creating a beautiful thing. It's not only one person. Yeah. We, I, you know, like for example, you do the idea or the sketch is so pretty picture, but behind, yeah, you know, like there's tons of all of, of us work. Yeah. make it happen and True. work together. You know, and make it giving more than hundred percent. I'm so lucky. All my team, you know, this this amazing team, vendors. Uh, the providers, the installers, the the staff, you know, like our team, uh, all of us working together, and more, all of us give more than hundred percent. That's why the projects so much they yeah. come. They, they, There's uh, that's a line of they, professionals. That's amazing. Definitely. So uh, we're very thankful. We're on the good track. Sandra, thanks, uh, thanks so much for uh, for this conversation. Really, I will uh, I will talk with you for hours, but I don't want to keep you on, uh, on <laughs> this. You. So thanks so much. No, this was uh, amazing. Yeah, really. No, thank you. Um, I, I, I never, you know, like I don't like to, there's many other uh, challenges ahead yeah. and, and that will cover like, I don't know how many hours in the technological part, uh, but I think we have, we, we are really, you know, like we already know that yeah. we need yeah. more to focus on on what's the solutions and what's good. Okay, these are the challenges, but we're here to cooperate and work together for the new future. And we have the amazing chance to, to shape it. Sure. So let's and also be, and also the and also to be, be humble and be humble and uh, uh, realize that you have to change if you want to survive. You have to evolve as the giraffes did uh, for, with their neck in order to <laughs> reach the higher leaves on the trees you know because they didn't find anything <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> on the ground yeah. change is the only constant that's cool. it <laughs> sandra thanks so much and uh hope to see you very soon uh Likewise. maybe in real uh, next time and uh, me i hope so yes for sure that will happen yeah. yes you know <laughs> salone has been uh, has been cancelled of course but for next uh, year Next year, I think it will be amazing. Also, because Milan was uh, one of the uh, main center of the epidemic in Italy. And so I think they will do a good job next year in order to come back. I cannot, in, uh, wait. Yeah, I cannot wait. It's, um, I, yeah, to go to my beloved Italy. <laughs> Sandra, thanks so much again. We'll be in touch uh, very soon. Thank you, Stefano. Peace. <laughs> bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye. See you soon. <laughs>